Good evening. We have a great show planned for you this evening. It's very special. We have the seventh grade uh, bell, <coughs> excuse me, bell choir from Corpus Christi, and the band Joyful Noise will perform. And we have a very special guest. Santa Claus is here, and we'll be talking to him in just a few minutes. So what a pleasure it is to start with the, the bell choir from Corpus Christi. Take it away, guys.
Corpus Christi Bell Choir, seventh grade. Were they absolutely wonderful or what? We have a lot more surprises coming for you before we get to Santa. He's being very patient with us. But another guest we had tonight had an unfortunate issue and could not get here. So I still want to give her some uh, credit for doing everything that she does, for uh, recording for us so that we can show her to you tonight. Linda Dickinson, uh, she started the band Joyful Noise, and her story is pretty interesting. She's been singing all of her life, about the last eight years has been with uh, the band. And in 2006, Linda started Joyful Noise Ministries, and she would uh, go to nursing homes and weddings or wherever she could perform. In 2010, she met Lori and Rodney Lucas, and they started playing in the living room and kind of kept that up for a long time. Uh, Linda and uh, Kirk Dickinson, the drummer is Brian Geyser. Lori and Rodney Lucas will be performing here in a minute, and tonight they're going to perform Light of the World and O Holy Night. And they would like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and apologize for not being able to be here and talk with you. So um, we're going to go ahead and roll tape and let you see this great band play just for you on this Christmas special.
about you, but I've been pretty excited about uh, Santa Claus for more years than I'm going to admit on television. But before my time, Santa was actually going around visiting kids and he certainly did visit me several times. <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Santa. Well, you're welcome, Bob. Welcome to our show. Well, I'm delighted to be here. I'm so happy that you took the time to, to come to St. Clairsville. We really appreciate it. I'm always excited to come to the Ohio Valley. It's a, it's a highlight for me I, I, every year to come here. How wonderful. You know, before we get into the questions that we want to ask you about Christmas, um, obviously there's more to Christmas than Santa showing up and so we wonder if you talk a little bit about the meaning of Christmas for us. You know, Christmas all began, I, the, the great celebration is of course that uh, God uh, delivered to, uh, to earth his, uh, his only son. And the, the celebration of Christmas is, uh, is that gift. And uh, Santa celebrates the, the gift of Jesus every year. Uh, uh, and, and I'm delighted to present my gifts to, uh, to, the, to the Christ child. And, and uh, you know, I, Santa was born 300 years, uh, St. Nicholas was born 300 years after, and became the Bishop of Myra, and uh, uh, began his idea of giving. And, and Christmas is a celebration of giving, and it's often giving to people who are less fortunate. So uh, as the bishop, uh, I would, uh, my parents were very wealthy, and, and I would give gifts to the people less fortunate. Sometimes it was money, sometimes it was simple as fruit and all, and, and through the years uh, I've become many things to many people. So it's St. Nicholas, uh, uh, also uh, in, in Dutch it was uh, Sin, uh, Sinclair and it became St. Nicholas. So that's been the spirit. So it's the spirit of giving, uh, receiving gifts. I give gifts, but I want people to, to the idea of giving gifts to the less fortunate. So. That is to the true spirit of, uh, of, of Santa Claus and Christmas. Well, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. You know, we all anticipate mm. your, your visiting and your arriving all the time. I'm sure there are a lot of our viewers right now who just can't wait to get there. But I, I have to ask this question. When you come down the chimney, I was told of a boy that you come down the chimney, but sometimes people don't have a chimney. Sometimes the chimney's blocked. So in those cases, Everybody, I'm sure, wants to know, how did you get in the house? Well, you know, I get that question often, but I have this magic key, Bob. And this magic key allows me to come into houses that don't have chimneys. So I can come in the door and, and get in. I, I recently had a young girl say, my daddy's a policeman and he has a police dog. And Sarek is very alert. So how do you get in? And I say, I use my magic key to come in the door, and this key calms Sarek. So he's not going to be alerted and bark. So I can come in, place my gifts under the tree, and go away without Sarek causing to be alarmed. So now you know, Bob, it's, it's this magic key, magic key that allows me to come in if I'm not coming down the chimney. Thank you. I've been wanting for years to find out how you got in. I had all kinds of ideas in my mind. They were all wrong. But, but <laughs> thank you. Um, what about Mrs. Claus now? How is she doing? Mrs. Claus is, is doing fine. Uh, her, her biggest responsibility is keeping me in line. You know, it's, uh, I always say to the boys and girls, please leave me cookies and milk. And, you know, I, I enjoy all types of cookies. I like chocolate chip. And, Mrs. Uh -oh. Claus has, <laughs> has recently taken to telling me, you know, you always ask for carrots for the reindeer. Maybe, Santa, you ought to be thinking about eating a few carrots yourself. And I, I tell her, no, 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 no. I'll lose the weight afterwards, not, not beforehand. Not before. <laughs> so let me have my cookies, and uh, we'll let the reindeer have the carrots somehow. But she, she's doing fine. She's doing fine. Um, i got to ask you this question. All year long, the elves are busy in your toy shop, I'm sure. How long does it take them to make all of those presents? Well, yeah, we, we are busy all year round, but we really do get busy starting, I guess, probably August, September, and on through, because that's when everybody kind of defines what they really want and, and understands the gifts that are most popular. So. We have many, many warehouses, and I tell, as I tell the boys and girls, 
you know, oh yes, my Nerf gun warehouses are huge because that is such a popular gift. But the popularity of the gift determines when we really, really get going. Yes, we have some activity all year round, but it really picks up in, in the month of August. And, yeah. you know, we have some fun too. Santa goes away kind of in that first quarter. You sometimes see pictures of Santa <coughs> in some sandals and a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt. And there's a little truth to that. I do get away a little bit, you know. A little vacation. I mean, Santa is not a young man. He, uh, he has to have a little relaxation to uh, enjoy himself. So, yes, we really get picked up in the second half of the year. That is great. Uh, now, I'm sure that Mrs. Claus is just as busy as you are and just as important to Christmas as anything is. And what kind of things does she do as far as helping out with getting the gifts ready? Well, uh, she doesn't necessarily make the gifts, but you know, she kind of has a supervisory role, if you will. Mm -hmm. She she does kind of keep the elves in line, and she does make sure that uh, she, she does play a role in understanding what are the most popular gifts for boys and girls. So, in, in that vein, she is she is key in that yes. in that vein. Yeah. So that's great. Now, um, what about uh, do you? One of the things I've always thought about is, do you ever ask the parents to maybe help get some of the gifts under the tree if you're busy and things are really going on or the weather's bad? Do you ever help, ask them for help? Well, we absolutely do. So the parents play a special role in, uh, in that. And, and I do say this, some boys and girls will ask me for dogs and cats. And, you know, that really is the parents' responsibility. Santa's specialty is toys. So if they're dogs or cats, that's, that's kind of the parents' role. So oh. when we come to animals, the parents are heavily involved in, in that decision. But yes, and uh, sometimes they ask me for cash and cars. It's kind of that, that too. I mean, my specialty is toys. We make toys. We, we don't make automobiles in the North Pole. We let General Motors and Ford and, and, uh, and Kia take care of those uh, activities. Oh, well, I, I wondered how that would work out. It's always been a question on my mind. And we all know the song, Rudolph with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Does Rudolph uh, still guide your sleigh? Very much so, because there is fog all the time. And, and you know, we, we hear a lot of discussion about weather and uh, in regards to uh, the climate change and all. But so, so there are conditions that we need that red nose to get us through the places that, uh, that are out there. So Rudolph is very key. I, and uh, I have to be a little careful in the Ohio Valley. We have so many hunters Ooh. in the Ohio Valley. Uh, sometimes I have to take ground transportation uh, before I take my big ride on Christmas Eve because oh. <laughs> uh, I have to be careful. I'd hate to lose uh, Cupid or uh, one of my other reindeer because the hunters are so very efficient here oh in the goodness. Ohio Valley, you know. So oh. I, I have to be careful with certain parts of the, uh, of the world and the country. Wow, well, that's true. We have a lot of really excellent shooters in this area. We do. But I'm sure, I'm sure they wouldn't want to shoot any reindeer, but they might well, do it by accident. They, that's possible. That's very possible. Um, by the way, speaking of reindeer and Rudolph, what do you feed the, the reindeer? Well, I mean, we do eat vegetables and carrots and all, and some people put together some concoctions, such as reindeer food and grain and all. So. You know, they're, they're pretty formidable. They have iron s stomachs, so they can eat just about anything. But they have, some, they have a sweet tooth of sorts, so carrots are this, the preferred food, if you will. Oh, carrots, huh? Well, I think people will be happy to know that. Well, sometimes I worry the grocery stores run out of carrots at this time of the year. So because I'll bet. I kind of tell the boys and girls what they like, so that's, that's a concern. That might be a run on carrots down at the grocery store. So if we ever have a, a carrot blight, we're in deep trouble at Christmas that would, time. <laughs> that, would be, that would be bad. Um, now this is another question that I've often wondered. You visit millions of people, millions of kids around the world, and almost all of them leave cookies for Santa. Now I'm thinking maybe you can't eat all of them. So. Do you ever take any of these cookies home to Mrs. Claus and the elves? And we do carry some back, but I do have a large capacity to eat cookies ah. on Christmas Eve. So I do my best to eat most of them. And, 
you know, I've been known to gain 15 pounds in a night uh, in, in, on Christmas Eve. Oh, so my, my, my. That's, uh, that, you know, that's why Mrs. Claus gets after me. That's why she told me I should maybe eat the carrots as opposed to the cookies. Well, that's really interesting. I wondered about that. Well, you know, uh, we have some other entertainment here that we're going to watch a little bit, and then we're going to come back to you again. Yes, I understand there's some boys and girls who may be visiting with me here momentarily. I think so. I heard that rumor that there were some children sneaking around the back of the building and they might be trying to get in. I'm excited. I brought my bell. Let me hear that just... bell. Okay, we're going to go to music now and uh, Oh Holy Night, Joyful Noise. So can we go to Oh Holy Night?
night, everybody. So, I'm excited to be here with some great young boys and girls. And I have Layla and Camden and Kylie and Hunter with me. All right. Layla, so how have you been? And how is my elf Dash? Oh, elf is hiding. It's hiding, huh? Yeah. Can't find Dash? Is hiding really well? Yeah. Well, great. And I understand. I look, I look everywhere. You look everywhere? Mm-hmm. Yeah, two of us. You did? You looked everywhere and couldn't find him? Yeah. Oh, boy. You're really doing a good job, huh? Yeah. Well, here's what I'm understanding. A pink computer and a Peppa Pig castle. Were those the things you're looking for? Mm-hmm. That would be good. In Camden, a fingerling and a Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch, huh? And an iPod. And an, oh, an iPod as well. Okay, so here's my big question. I always ask this question of brothers and sisters and cousins too. Fighting. Any fighting going on? No. No? Okay, because that's important because if you fight, you get fewer gifts. If you don't fight, you get more gifts. So that's just really, really important. All right, so I want you to be really good. We have three days to go before I get in the sleigh. How about that? All right. And then Hunter. Mm -hmm -hmm. Did you send me something for from Dasher? Something yeah. from Put-In Bay? I think I have it up on my mantle. You sent me a globe, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. That was awfully nice of you. So that that is really kind of a special gift that you sent me. And are you looking for a fingerling? Is that what you wanted to? No. Well, but what else were you looking for? A dirt bike. A dirt bike. Oh, you have to be really good to get a dirt bike. How good have you been? Good. Good? Really good and no fighting. Yes? No? Yes. Yes, you've been fighting? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll have to make sure. No. I'll have to ask Dasher again what's going on, right? Yes. Okay, that's important. And Kylie, on your list, did I hear it was a telephone? No phone on your list? Okay. Well, yes, no phone. There's a phone on your list, and who are you going to call? Well, then I guess you don't need a phone if no, you don't know who telephone. you're going to. If you don't know you're who you're going to call. It's not a telephone. Oh, not a not a telephone. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's. I thought somebody told me it was a phone. I know a pottery wheel, though, right? That was something on your list. No. No, not a pottery wheel. I must be getting bad information from my elves then. So you've been doing well in school, though, haven't mm -hmm. you? Well, what else is on that list that they haven't told me about? I just want a regular phone. A what kind of phone? Tell me, what, what, what was that yeah. you said? It's Say that to phone. me again. An iPhone. An iPhone. Well, let's see, that's what, see, I'm not, and you're nine, is that true? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're quite old enough for an iPhone yet. We'll have to really think hard about that somehow. Because that's what I was asking about. Um, and the pottery wheel, that wasn't something you were looking for? It wasn't. Okay. Well, I think that I am really thankful that you all came to see me today. And I want you to really be good the rest of the way, okay? Will you do that for me? And you heard I was talking to Bob about this cookie. You make sure that I will be able to get some cookies, okay? Yeah. Cookies in milk for me? Yeah. Well, we're, get, we're giving you every cookie. Oh, we are, huh? And let's find the elves, all right? Yeah. All right, well, Merry Christmas to you all. All right, and I'll see you soon. Well, Merry Christmas to all of you, and Merry Christmas, Santa. I want to thank you guys for coming in. It was very nice of you to come over and talk to Santa for us. We want to say good night and thank you very much for joining us throughout the year and for this special Christmas show that we've all enjoyed so much. And my name is Bob Connors. I'm your host. 
We'll be back again in January with more shows, more interesting things, and I think you'll really like it a lot. But we have one more thing before we leave. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. <laughs> was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama and her kerchief, and I and my cap, had settled down our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wind hurricane fly, when they met an obstacle, mount into the sky. So up to the housetop courses they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. In a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. And as I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys was flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his sack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face, a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, right jolly old elf, and I'd laugh when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to the sleigh. To his team he gave a whistle and they flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, Mary drove out of sight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs>